Hello, everybody. I want to bring another word about Moses today. We are continuing to ask the question, why did God keep Moses out of the promised land? First, we need to understand who Moses is. And in the last three videos, I've looked at various aspects of Moses' life. We saw that Moses was a prophet like Jesus. He actually prophesied that God would raise up a prophet like him. And then Stephen speaks about that in the book of Acts. We also saw that Moses was the first person in Scripture who was called a man of God. And then the second person in Scripture was actually the angel of the Lord or God himself. So that really, I think, speaks volumes about who Moses was and how great of a man he was. Today we're going to talk about the fact that Moses was also a priest of God. We often don't think of it in those terms because we, we think of Aaron, his brother, as being the high priest and uh, then that the line of the priest came from Aaron and the line of the priest did not come from Moses. But the fact is, Moses was actually a higher priest than Aaron. And today we're going to look at certain scriptures that uh, talk about that. And I think you're going to find them very enlightening. And this is going to help us to answer the question about why Moses died without being able to go into the promised land. I'm now going to begin reading you some scriptures that are very powerful scriptures, very exciting scriptures, I believe, concerning uh, this time for Israel soon after they left the land of Egypt, starting in Exodus chapter 19. On the third new moon, that would be the beginning of the third month, Israel counted their months according to the time of the new moon. On the third new moon, after the people of Israel had gone out of the land of Egypt, on that day they came into the wilderness of Sinai. They set out from Rephidim and came into the wilderness of Sinai, and they encamped in the wilderness. There Israel encamped before the mountain while Moses went up to God. The Lord called to him out of the mountain, saying, Thus you shall say to the house of Jacob and tell the people of Israel, you yourselves have seen what I did to the Egyptians and how I bore you on eagles' wings and brought you to myself. Now, therefore, if you will indeed obey my voice and keep my covenant, you shall be my treasured possession among all peoples. For all the earth is mine, and you shall be to me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. These are the words that you shall speak to the people of Israel. Now, that's the very same promise that came about 1,500 years later to the people who believed in Jesus Christ. Christians are also called to be a kingdom of priests and to be a holy nation. Exodus 19, verse 7. So Moses came and called the elders of the people and set before them all these words that the Lord had commanded him. All the people answered together and said, All that the Lord has spoken we will do. And Moses reported the words of the people to the Lord. And the Lord said to Moses, Behold, I am coming to you in a thick cloud, that the people may hear when I speak with you, and may also believe you forever. The thick cloud hides the presence of the Lord so that the people can't see what Moses will be seeing, but they will hear the voice of God. When Moses told the words of the people to the Lord, the Lord said to Moses, Go to the people and consecrate them today and tomorrow, and let them wash their garments and be ready for the third day. This consecration is getting ready, getting clean before the Lord. For on the third day the Lord will come down on Mount Sinai in the sight of all the people, and you shall set limits for the people all around, saying, Take care not to go up into the mountain or touch the edge of it. Whoever touches the mountain shall be put to death. No hand shall touch him, but he shall be stoned or shot, whether beast or man. He shall not live. 
When the trumpet sounds a long blast, they shall come up to the mountain. So Moses went down from the mountain to the people and consecrated the people. And they washed their garments. And he said to the people, Be ready for the third day. Do not, know, do not go near a woman. So keep yourself clean and also keep yourself sexually pure. On the morning of the third day, there were thunders and lightnings and a thick cloud on the mountain and a very loud trumpet blast so that all the people in the camp trembled. Then Moses brought the people out of the camp to meet God, and they took their stand at the foot of the mountain. Now Mount Sinai was wrapped in smoke, because the Lord had descended on it in fire. The smoke of it went up like the smoke of a kiln, and the whole mountain trembled greatly. And as the sound of the trumpet grew louder and louder, Moses spoke, and God answered him in the thunder. The Lord came down on Mount Sinai to the top of the mountain, and the Lord called Moses to the top of the mountain, and Moses went up. Imagine this spectacle. This is a fearful, fearsome time. In fact, in the New Testament, it says that Moses trembled with fear. Well, who wouldn't? But yet Moses goes up. And the Lord said to Moses, Go down and warn the people, lest they break through to the Lord to look, and many of them perish. And let the priests who come near to the Lord consecrate themselves, lest the Lord break out against them. And Moses said to the Lord, The people cannot come up to Mount Sinai, for you yourself warned us, saying, Set limits around the mountain and consecrate it. And the Lord said to him, Go down and come up, bringing Aaron with you, but do not let the priests and the people break through to come up to the Lord, lest he break out against them. So Moses went down to the people and told them. Now we're at verse or chapter 20. 20 is where the Ten Commandments occur at the very beginning. And God spoke all these words saying, I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. Now that's all of the Ten Commandments I'll read right now, but it's always good to review those if you're not well aware of them. So anyway, Moses gives these commands to the people, and there's about four chapters of commands. And then in Exodus 24, we have this. Then he said to Moses, Come up to the Lord, you and Aaron, Nadab and Abihu, those are the two sons of Aaron, and 70 of the elders of Israel, and worship from afar. Moses alone shall come near to the Lord, but the others shall not come near, and the people shall not come up with him. Moses came and told the people all the words of the Lord and all the rules, and all the people answered with one voice and said, All the words that the Lord has spoken we will do. And Moses wrote down all the words of the Lord. He rose early in the morning and built an altar at the foot of the mountain and twelve pillars, according to the twelve tribes of Israel. And he sent young men of the people of Israel who offered burnt offerings and sacrificed peace offerings of oxen to the Lord. And Moses took half of the blood and put it in basins, and half of the blood he threw against the altar. Then he took the book of the covenant and read it in the hearing of the people, and they said, All that the Lord has spoken we will do, and we will be obedient. And Moses took the blood and threw it on the people and said, Behold, the blood of the covenant that the Lord has made with you in accordance with all these words. Then Moses and Aaron and Nadab and Abihu and 70 of the elders in Israel went up, and they saw the God of Israel. Now make note here, God has already shown himself on Mount Sinai in a cloud of smoke. He's given the law to Moses, at least the first part of the revelation of the law. Moses has delivered it to the people as a testimony. And now he, Aaron, Nadab, and Abihu, and 70 elders are going back up the mountain. Chapter 24, verse 10, And they saw the God of Israel. There was under his feet, as it were, a pavement of sapphire stone, like the very heaven, for clearness. And he did not lay his hand on the chief men of the people of Israel. They beheld God and ate and drank. The Lord said to Moses, Come up to me on the mountain and wait there, that I may give you the tablets of stone with the law and the commandment, which I have written for their instruction. 
So Moses rose with his assistant Joshua, and Moses went up into the mountain of God. And he said to the elders, Wait here for us until we return to you. And behold, Aaron and Hur are with you. Whoever has a dispute, let him go to them. Then Moses went up on the mountain, and the cloud covered the mountain. The glory of the Lord dwelt on Mount Sinai, and the cloud covered it six days. And on the seventh day, he called to Moses out of the midst of the cloud. Now the appearance of the glory of the Lord was like a devouring fire on the top of the mountain in the sight of the people of Israel. Moses entered the cloud and went up on the mountain, and Moses was on the mountain forty days and forty nights. Chapter 25 starts then, and it says, The Lord said to Moses, Speak to the people of Israel that they, and so on. And so he, now he relates various laws uh, relating to building the Ark of the Covenant and the Tabernacle of the Covenant, or the Tabernacle of the Testimony, as it is also called. And so you just heard that Moses was on this mountain now for 40 days and 40 nights, alone with the Lord. And now I'm going to skip through uh, the laws that God gave to him at that time, and we're going to go to chapter 32, because this now takes us to the end of this 40-day period of time. And remember, just before this, Moses had delivered the first part of the law to Israel. So you have to remember the context. And here we are, chapter 32. When the people saw that Moses delayed to come down from the mountain, the people gathered themselves together to Aaron and said to him, Up, make us gods who shall go before us. As for this Moses, the man who brought us up out of the land of Egypt, we do not know what has become of him. So Aaron said to them, Take off the rings of gold that are in the ears of your wives, your sons, and your daughters, and bring them to me. So all the people took off the rings of gold that were in their ears and brought them to Aaron. And he received the gold from their hand and fashioned it with a graving tool and made a golden calf. And they said, these are your gods, O Israel, who brought you up out of the land of Egypt. When Aaron saw this, he built an altar before it. And Aaron made proclamation and said, Tomorrow shall be a feast to the Lord. And they rose up early the next day and offered burnt offerings and brought peace offerings. And the people sat down to eat and drink and rose up to play. And the Lord said to Moses, Go down. For your people whom you brought up out of the land of Egypt have corrupted themselves. They have turned aside quickly out of the way that I commanded them. They have made for themselves a golden calf and have worshipped it and sacrificed to it and said, These are your gods, O Israel, who brought you up out of the land of Egypt. And the Lord said to Moses, I have seen this people, and behold, it is a stiff-necked people. Now therefore let me alone, that my wrath may burn hot against them, and I may consume them in order that I may make a great nation of you. Now here's where we see the priest, Moses the priest. But Moses implored the Lord his God and said, O Lord, why does your wrath burn hot against your people, whom you have brought out of the land of Egypt with great power and with a mighty hand? Why should the Egyptians say, with evil intent did he bring them out to kill them in the mountains and to consume them from the face of the earth. Turn from your burning anger and relent from this disaster against your people. What an intercessor. Can you imagine speaking to God this way? Now remember, Moses is with God at this point. Remember Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, your servants, to whom you swore by your own self and said to them, I will multiply your offspring as the stars of heaven and all this land that I have promised I will give to your offspring and they shall inherit it forever. And the Lord relented from the disaster that he had spoken of bringing on his people. So the Lord listened to Moses, the intercessor. That is the role of a priest to intercede for those who are in sin. Let us intercede for those 
whom we know to be in, in sin, and let us ask that God would bring them into repentance. Then Moses turned and went down from the mountain with the two tablets of the testimony in his hand. Remember the testimony to the law and to the testimony. If they will not speak according to this word, it is because there is no light in them. The testimony of God is the witness that God is real and true, that his word is true. Again, then Moses turned and went down from the mountain with the two tablets of the testimony in his hand. Tablets that were written on both sides, on the front and on the back, they were written. The tablets were the work of God, and the writing was the writing of God engraved on the tablets. When Joshua heard the noise of the people as they shouted, he said to Moses, There's a noise of war in the camp. But he said, It is not the sound of shouting for victory or the sound of the cry of defeat, but the sound of singing I hear. And as soon as he came near the camp and saw the calf and the dancing, Moses' anger burned hot, and he threw the tablets out of his hands and broke them at the foot of the mountain. He took the calf that they had made and burned it with fire and ground it to powder and scattered it on the water and made the people of Israel drink it. And Moses said to Aaron, What did this people do to you that you have brought such a great sin upon them? Aaron. Aaron, what have you done? And Aaron said, Now remember, Aaron's older than Moses. Moses is the leader. Moses is the prophet. Moses is the chief priest. And Aaron said, Let not the anger of my Lord burn hot. You know the people that they are set on evil. For they said to me, Make us gods who shall go before us. As for this Moses, the man who brought us up out of the land of Egypt, we do not know what has become of him. So I said to them, Let any of you who have gold take it off. So they gave it to me, and I threw it into the fire. And out came this calf. Right. And when Moses saw that the people had broken loose, for Aaron had let them break loose to the derision of their enemies, Then Moses stood in the gate of the camp and said, Who is on the Lord's side? Come to me. And all the sons of Levi gathered around him, and he said to them, Thus says the Lord God of Israel. How does he know? How does Moses know what the Lord God of Israel says? Because he's a prophet. He hears God. Put your sword on your side, each of you, and go to and fro from gate to gate throughout the camp, and each of you kill his brother and his companion, and his neighbor. And the sons of Levi did according to the word of of Moses. And that day about 3,000 men of the people fell. Now it's interesting that there were 3,000 people who received the gift of the Holy Spirit when the Holy Spirit fell on the day of Pentecost, right after Christ's death and resurrection. And Moses said, Today, You have been ordained for the service of the Lord, each one at the cost of his son and of his brother, so that he might bestow a blessing upon you this day. The next day Moses said to the people, You have sinned a great sin. And now I will go up to the Lord. Perhaps I can make atonement for your sin. See, he's a priest. He, he, as priest, will ask God to forgive, cover their sin, make atonement for their sin. So Moses returned to the Lord and said, Alas, this people have sinned a great sin. They have made for themselves gods of gold. But now if you for, will forgive their sin, but if not, please blot me out of your book that you have written. Moses shows himself as willing to die here for his own people. But the Lord said to Moses, Whoever has sinned against me, I will blot out of my book. But now go, lead the people to the place about which I have spoken to you. Behold, my angel shall go before you. Nevertheless, in the day when I visit, I will visit their sin upon them. Then the Lord sent a plague on the people because they made the calf, the one that Aaron made. The Lord said to Moses, Depart, go up from here, you and the people whom you have brought up out of the land of Egypt, to the land of which I swore to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, saying, To your offspring I will give it. 
I will send an angel before you, and I will drive out the Canaanites, the Amorites, the Hittites, the Perizzites, the Hivites, and the Jebusites. Go up to a land flowing with milk and honey, but I will not go up among you, lest I consume you on the way, for you are a stiff-necked people. When the people heard this disastrous word, they mourned, and no one put on his ornaments. Now what's so disastrous? God says he will not go up with them. For the Lord said to Moses, Say to the people of Israel, You are a stiff-necked people. If for a single moment I should go up among you, I would consume you. So now take off your ornaments, that I may know what to do with you. Therefore the people of Israel stripped themselves of their ornaments from Mount Horeb onward. Now Moses used to take the tent and pitch it outside the camp, far off from the camp. And he called it the tent of meeting. And everyone who sought the Lord would go out to the tent of meeting, which was outside the camp. Whenever Moses went out to the tent, all the people would rise up and each would stand at his tent door and watch Moses until he had gone into the tent. When Moses entered the tent, the pillar of cloud would descend and stand at the entrance of the tent, and the Lord would speak with Moses. And when all the people saw the pillar of cloud standing at the entrance of the tent, all the people would rise up and worship each at his tent door. Thus the Moses just Thus the Lord used to speak to Moses face to face as a man speaks to his friend. When Moses turned again into the camp, his assistant Joshua, the son of Nun, a young man, would not depart from the tent. Remember, Joshua actually went up on the mountain with Moses, and here's Joshua still with Moses. So this is why Joshua was named as the one who would lead Israel after Moses, and also Joshua, of course, is the Hebrew name Yeshua, which is the name for Jesus. So Joshua represents the next phase in the revelation of God from Moses to Jesus. Chapter 33, verse 12. Moses said to the Lord, See, you say to me, bring up this people, but you have not let me know whom you will send with me. Yet you have said, I know you by name. And you have also found favor in my sight. Now, therefore, if I have found favor in your sight, please show me now your ways that I may know you in order to find favor in your sight. The psalm says that the people saw the acts of God, but Moses knew his ways. Can we say that we know the ways of God? Or do we only look for the next miracle, the next manifestation? A sign. Do we know most, Do we know God's ways? Or are we more like the unbelievers in Israel who only knew his acts? Let us know God's ways. And that's why I'm going through this teaching, so that we can have a basis for understanding the ways of God. So Moses goes on, he says, Consider, too, that this nation is your people. And God said, My presence will go with you and I will give you rest. My presence, the word presence there is the Hebrew word penim. Penim means face. In the tabernacle that Moses would make and the people of Israel would make, there was the bread, they call it the show bread in the King James Version, but it's the bread of faces. The bread of faces. It, it deals prophetically with coming before the face of God like Moses did. And Moses said to God, If your presence or if your face will not go with me, do not bring us up from here. For how shall it be known that I have found favor in your sight, I and your people? Is it not in your going with us so that we are distinct, I and your people, from every other people on the face of the earth? See, that's the distinction, that God is with us. And Moses was appealing to God, Yes, you must go with us. Your face must go with us. And the Lord said to Moses, This very thing that you have spoken I will do, for you have found favor in my sight, and I know you by name. Moses said, Please show me your glory. And he said, I will make all my goodness pass before you and will proclaim before you my name, the Lord, and I will be gracious to whom I will be gracious and will show mercy on whom I will show mercy. 
But he said, you cannot see my face, for man shall not see me and live. And the Lord said, behold, there is a place by me where you shall stand on the rock. And while my glory passes by, I will put you in a cleft of the rock and I will cover you with my hand until I have passed by. Then I will take away my hand and you shall see my back, but my face you shall not see. Isn't this interesting? Didn't we just hear that God spoke to Moses face to face? And here God says, you cannot see my face. There's a mystery here. The mystery is that when a man sees the face of God when he's in the flesh, he sees the angel of the Lord. The angel of the Lord, remember, was called a man of God in the book of Judges. And the mother and father of Samson thought they might die because they'd seen God face to face. But it was the angel of the Lord. It was the flesh, fleshly representation. It was Jesus in the flesh. See, when we see Jesus in the flesh, we do not die, but we cannot see the eternal, immortal, spiritual God face to face and live. Not until a certain thing happens to us in the future called the glorification or the resurrection of the dead. So today in this reading, we've read Exodus 19 and 20, Exodus 24, and Exodus 32 and 33. And what we see is that Moses was the preeminent priest before God. He was higher than Aaron. He interceded for Aaron and God heard his prayer. But we still haven't answered the question Why did God cause Moses to die before entering the promised land? Beginning of Joshua begins, Moses, my servant, is dead. Why is he dead? Thanks for watching. I pray that God will open your eyes to see and your ears to hear what the Spirit says to the churches. Amen.